Welcome back to The Daily Poem. I'm David Kern, and today is Monday, June 22nd, 2020. Today's poem is by one of my favorites, Ted Couser. He was born in April of 1939, served as Poet Laureate Consultant in Poetry to the Library of Congress from 2004 to 2006. And if uh, you've been listening to this podcast for a while, you know that he is one of my favorites. The poem that I'm going to read today is from his newest collection. It's called Kindest Regards, New and Selected Poems. It's wonderful, and you should, you should get it uh, <laughs> wherever books are sold yourself a copy and spend a bunch of time with it because it's it's really uh, worth the time this poem is called a summer afternoon with clouds and it goes like this some of the lower clouds traveling in groups of four or five appear to be lost and pace this way and that dragging their carpet bags their overcoats tattered the cheap white lining spilling A few have stopped to ask directions of the wind, who is peevish, with too many to take care of already. Meanwhile, the tallest clouds, who can see over the heads of the rest, have spotted their families waiting for them where the luggage is piled on the far horizon, and are drifting away, shoulder to shoulder, the smaller clouds now sheepishly following. But still, there's the sorely overworked wind stuck at his station for the rest of the day, He dreams of having just one afternoon alone with not one cloud, with a few pleasant hours to enjoy his collection, his big stamp album spread open, showing the villages and fields. One of the things that I love about Kuzer is the way he takes things that we do all the time, and he embeds them, he imbues them with this intense pathos. So how often have any of us, uh, maybe even sitting outside with our kids or in the drive, on a long car drive or whatever it is, and we're looking at the clouds and we're saying, hey, that one looks like the shape of an elephant. That one looks the shape, like the shape of a boot or a hat or, or a cow or a car or a train or whatever it is. You know, kids do this all the time and it's a great way to spend time with kids. You, you know, they get so distracted by that and their imaginations are so taken by it and they begin to sometimes create these stories but at least they see these images and for Kuzer he takes this thing that people do all the time and he embeds that activity with poetry you know he embeds it with this deep pathos and so at first you know he says well the clouds look at the traveling in groups right that sounds like something a child might say hey look like those those clouds are traveling in groups my four-year-old might say you know, then my older son might say, they, they look like they could be lost. And then my other son might say, yeah, they kind of look like they're walking back and forth. And so we have, you know, that's the beginning of the poem. And then Kuzo takes it to the next level and he says, they're dragging their carpet bags and their overcoats are tattered. And a child might say, hey, it looks like they're dragging something. But just by mentioning that they're carpet bags and that they have tattered overcoats, Kuzer adds this first level of pathos to it. Then they're, they're asking for directions, he says, which of course suggests that they're lost. Adds another level of pathos to it. And then there's the tall clouds who are looking for their families. And they're, they're, the families are standing by the luggage and on a far horizon. And, and the smaller clouds are, are following them as the, older, the, the bigger ones drift away. They're looking for, for home. They're looking for a place, right? They're looking for a resting place. So there's another level of pathos to it. And then here's another one. There's the overworked wind stuck at his station for the rest of the day. He's the one that's giving directions, right? But the wind dreams of having an afternoon alone without one cloud. With a few pleasant hours to enjoy his collection. His big stamp album spread open, showing the villages and the fields. So we've got the wind up there who who would love to not have to blow the clouds around and give them directions and tell them where to go and carry them on his back. And instead he wants to look, he wants to stop and he wants to look and he wants to enjoy the villages and the fields below, which he looks at like a stamp album spread open. And so that image itself is, is this humor in that, right? There's a it's kind of a funny concept of the, the wind looking down at villages and fields like stamps, like a collection. But I also love the idea of, the, of it looking down Um, and taking in the beauty of it, the wind, um, itself wanting to rest, being tired, 
needing a resting place, needing a home like the home that he sees in the villages and the fields below. In a way, it's a poem of, of loneliness, but the way that he builds to that is, is so, so expert. Um, and, and I love, I love this about uh, Kuzer's approach. Again, I really recommend you check out uh, this book. If you want to learn some more, you can head over to formerjournal.com. Uh, there's, a, there's a review called It All Means Something by Christian Lightheart, who reviewed this, this collection really nicely. And there's, there's plenty in there to learn more about Kuzer's, Kuzer's work and uh, what he's doing. So once more, here is A Summer Afternoon with Clouds. Some of the lower clouds, traveling in groups of four or five, appear to be lost, and paced this way and that, dragging their carpet bags, their overcoats tattered, the cheap white lining spilling. A few have stopped to ask directions of the wind, who is peevish, with too many to take care of already. Meanwhile, the tallest clouds, who can see over the heads of the rest, have spotted their families waiting for them where the luggage is piled on the far horizon, and are drifting away, shoulder to shoulder, the smaller clouds now sheepishly following. But still, there's the sorely overworked wind stuck at his station for the rest of the day. He dreams of having just one afternoon alone, with not one cloud, with a few pleasant hours to enjoy his collection, his big stamp album spread open, showing the villages and fields. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening. I'll be back uh, tomorrow with another poem for you.